Estou aqui. Olha. Olha, porra, presta atenção. Tá vendo? Eu lutei contra a cocaína a minha vida inteira. O que eu não sabia é que ela ia tirar o meu filho de mim. Eu sou policial! O que é que tu quer, caralho? Eu quero meu filho! Eu só quero o Pedro! Olá, Gabriel. How are you, Jamal? This is, uh, this is such a great show. Um, my first question to you is, like, after watching this and binge watching it, I wonder what shows have you binge watched during this pandemic? Like, what have you been watching? Well, one of the series I liked the most in 2020 was The Morning Show from Apple TV. I'm not sure you watched that. Yeah, I did. Steve Carell and Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon. I thought that was amazing. And recently, I know this much is true from HBO. That's an oh. amazing show too. Yeah. And from Amazon Prime Video, a note series that I hadn't watched before, Teabag. I binged <laughs> watched it in two nights. It was amazing. Yeah, Teabag is hilarious. Uh, uh, your, your character, Dom, I mean, he, he, he makes a lot of decisions. Um, And I wonder, I know it's a real life story, but where, where do you think he could have made a decision to change in his life that would have got him, got him off the path that he uh, eventually went down? Well, that's, that's a hard question because the stories we read say that he started using cocaine when he was nine years old i mean he was too young so you know he didn't really know what he was doing and what his responsibilities as a person were so from a very early childhood he already he was already addicted to drugs so that may have changed the way his life went about. Now, when I start performing in the show, he is already a drug addict. He's been admitted to hospitals more than 10 times. Now, considering the screenplay, I think a major turning point for him is when he joins the gang and he starts you know, professionally acting as a criminal, then it's a snowball, right? There is the snowballing effect. He's wanted by the police. He starts getting involved in major thefts. Then he's involved in corruption with the police. I mean, in the first episode, when he meets the gang in the favela, and maybe because of a coincidence or not, the leader is arrested and he becomes the leader. That is a major turning point, I guess. Você também. Vai tranquilo pro trabalho quando você voltar, eu vou estar aqui. Agora você que precisa confiar em mim. How, how dangerous is it in you, uh, real life as Gabrielle, to, to go into the flavelas? Like, maybe if you fell in love with a woman in the flavela, like, would you be able to go pick her up and date? Like, for, for us in America, like, our, our, 
our imagery and, our, and what we know about the favelas has been through like City of Gods and, and this story. But uh, on the real life, is this something that people from all classes like visit the favelas or is this something that's, you know, definitely just off limits unless you're, unless you're from there? Well, I can tell you I've been to the favelas very few times. As you said, for you in the US, you've got this image. I mean, I grew up at this neighborhood that had many favelas around it. I could see favelas all around. Sometimes I went by the favelas when I looked up or sideways, I could see the favelas, but I was never in there because we know that the favelas are ruled by gangsters, by drug traffickers, but at the same time, there's a lot of life in the favelas. There's art, there's culture. People live in the favelas and they commute to work every day I mean, people fall in love with people who live in the favelas, as you said. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, these are contradictory places because many families live in the favelas. There is great art production. The fact that the favelas are located at the top of the mountains. Well, makes them makes they have a great landscape but at the same time there is drug traffic and you know it's a contradictory environment as an actor uh growing up in rio how much uh resources are there for you like in school to do theater to do uh uh things that build your craft as an actor um was that supported by uh, I guess the gov the government and the education system in in Rio. Well, Jamal, I can tell you that we live a sad reality in Rio, and it's all about resistance. We resist a lot. That happens not only in Rio, but also in the country, especially because of the current administration that fights culture. There's a war against culture, it seems, by the government. So not only do they not incentivize culture, but they also fight culture initiatives. After the president joined the administration, the first thing they did was to do away with the Ministry of Culture which is quite an iconic action. In Rio de Janeiro, as I said, the reality is really sad. Let me give you one more example. Over the past years, many theaters were shut down and many theaters became churches, which is quite symbolic, I think. Unfortunately, that is the case. Unfortunately, in Rio, we're trying to resist. Theater collectives and groups are trying to resist. You know, filmmaking is all about resistance. That is our reality. Culture is not something that is fostered by the government. So I know this is based off of real people and a real story, but what other source material did you use to build uh, the character? Did you talk to people that were going through drug addiction? Did you talk to gangsters or anything else to help get like a fuller view of the character you were gonna portray? Well, the story was told by Pedro's father to our director more than 10 years ago. So Victor told Breno Pedro's story. He wanted to share his son's story. He also wanted to share his own story and their relationship. 
as father and son because they wanted this story to reach out, to reach as many families as possible. So yes, this story is based on a true story. Victor was an eyewitness to many of the surreal situations we can see on the show. The most surreal scenes actually happened in real life. So the show is about a father's perspective on his son, a father that was part of the police that lived in the favela as a young man, someone who saw cocaine getting to Brazil back in the day, and as someone who had to deal or handle his son who was a drug addict. His son was admitted to hospitals more than 10 times. He became one of the most wanted fugitives in Rio de Janeiro. I could not meet Pedro. When he was murdered, I was very young. And Victor passed before I joined the project. Victor is Pedro's father. He lived side by side with Breno for more than 10 years. So Breno is our North Star as he was our North Star as we shot the show, not only as the director and showrunner, but also as an eyewitness to Victor's story. So above all, we're going to see a father's perspective on his son's story. He's not playing down on his son's attitudes. I mean, it is what it is. Pedro was murdered at the age of 20 or in his early 20s, but it's his father's take. So there's love and there's a human take on that. I really love the show. Some of the most powerful moments were when, uh, when Victor handcuffed Dom to that bed and I felt very bad for Dom, but throughout the story, I understood what Victor was why Victor was acting the way he did and, and some of the demons that Victor was also fighting. And um, I just, I hope that everybody that gets to, to watch the show, whether just to enjoy it uh, for the story or to figure out a way to deal with their family who might be dealing with people involved with uh, drug addiction. So I hope to see you in a lot more stuff. Thank you for your time, um, child. And uh, I can't wait till Brazil is you know, clear the COVID so I could come back and visit once again. It's a beautiful country. Thank you, Jamal. You will be very welcome. Obrigado. Ciao.